Yeah, so DevOps really started as a way to eliminate waste within software development, basically uh, helping software developers move business value to market a lot faster. And it basically eliminated the 18-month release cycle. Uh, with DevSecOps, it's really about bringing security into the software development lifecycle, uh, not only as just a bolt-on thing at the end of the lifecycle, but really at the beginning of the development process itself and then throughout development. I think in both large enterprises as well as government organizations, the biggest impediment that I've seen is that people generally like their silos. They've operated in silos of development, security, and operations for years, and they haven't integrated those workflows in order to help bring value to, uh, to market faster. I think in this new age of higher velocity releases um, to market or to constituents, uh, what we have to consider is that security is baked into the beginning of the life cycle. It's actually integrated in for the developer to make decisions faster, uh, where they can actually make decisions with intelligence presented to them inside their tools within seconds versus sending it off to a security organization for reviews that might take uh, anywhere from a number of hours to months uh, for response time. So, I think that organizations need to understand that there are tools and solutions that can be instrumented in their workflows to help them uh, achieve security much earlier in the life cycle, uh, development life cycle with less friction. The super micro hack was very interesting because it really focused on an attack that was within a technology supply chain. Technology supply chains are very sophisticated and they're multifaceted. And to pull off a hack of this scale had to take a lot of coordinated effort. Uh, there are some that say it was a hoax. There are some that say that this uh, particular hack was real. But when we look at our technology supply chains, while the hardware uh, hack that was uh, documented by Bloomberg was sophisticated, there are less sophisticated attacks that are happening already within our software supply chains. And software supply chains have much more uh, attack surface available to them, uh, to our adversaries, than what we see in the uh, technology or hardware supply chains. I think when it comes to software, our organizations are a lot more exposed than most people imagine. Today, an average application is composed of open source software components. In fact, about 80% of the typical application is composed of these components. These components are brought into the organizations by software development teams that bring in hundreds of thousands of components from unknown sources of unknown origin and unknown quality. When these software components are downloaded and used in applications, we're seeing download vulnerability rates uh, in the range of 12% for Java components, in the range of 50% for JavaScript components that are used by developers. When these vulnerable components are built into the applications, it increases the attack surface available to adversaries and hackers uh, out there, which leaves a lot of great exposure within software supply chains that are feeding development practices in these organizations. We've seen that it's very easy for hackers to pull off uh, injecting malicious code into these software components that is then downloaded by millions of people uh, a week in some cases. By comparison, hardware supply chain attacks are very sophisticated, they're multifaceted, there are a lot of high touch points, and you have a lot more uh, physical controls in place uh, for those attacks to be harder to pull off. So I think just because of the ease of software uh, supply chain attacks, they are more dangerous. Mature DevOps practices are instrumenting their uh, automated security much more in the software development lifecycle. In fact, we saw uh, 335 percent more automated security implementations in mature DevOps practices versus organizations that had no DevOps practices. The other really interesting thing about the results from the survey was we saw uh, empirical information that said where automated security was being applied 
compliance to the security rules was more effective. In fact, it was twice uh, as effective in those environments where we asked people, do you have security controls in place and are you following them? In the places where security was automated most throughout the development life cycle, we saw a 2x uh, higher compliance ratio to those uh, security policies. You know, web applications are not only the most targeted by hackers, they're the most breached by hackers. The primary reason for this is they're connected to where all the data sits, whether that's personal information or financial information that's available to the consumers using uh, those web applications. The hackers know that that's the uh, entry point or the front door uh, to that data for the organization. Now, the exploit patterns have actually changed uh, over the, the last few years, and I don't think most organizations are, are aware of this. If it was 10 years ago, the time between a vulnerability being announced and it being exploited in the wild was about 45 days. In 2017, in the case of uh, Equifax as the most notable uh, breach of that year, we saw the exploit uh, pattern reduced to three days between the vulnerability announcement and the exploit. While a lot of people focus on uh, Equifax as the breached organization, they don't realize that during that same week, within those same few days after the vulnerability was announced, we saw nation states scanning the DOD networks. We saw the Canadian Revenue uh, Office, Canada Statistics, the Japanese Post, Okinawa Power, uh, and India Post were all breached through the same vulnerability within the same week. Uh, I think we need to be much more aware that not only have um, our development and security practices gotten faster through automation, but our adversaries are using similar technology to speed up their attack patterns. Uh, more recently, in 2018, we're seeing the time between vulnerability exposure and exploit uh, reduced down to zero that hackers are basically injecting malicious code into the software supply chain where they can attack as soon as those uh, open source components or open source software are deployed into production. I think one of the results that stood out to me this year uh, was that automated security is being introduced in more places in the software development lifecycle. And I think that's good for uh, all the organizations that are experiencing breaches or um, know that they have adversaries or hackers uh, approaching their infrastructure, their IT uh, environments. That investment is good. At the same time, we saw the number of uh, known or suspected breaches increasing 50% year over year from our previous year's survey. So while the investments in automated security have gone up, we're still seeing that the adversaries or hacker community have the upper hand. So I think we need to figure out ways to make sure that the things that we're investing in from a security standpoint are actually the things that are making the most difference in terms of protecting the data and the information that we have within our applications. What we really tried to do with All Day DevOps was bring DevOps education to the world. And to do this, we did it by eliminating all the barriers that people would normally find to this kind of education. First, we made it online, making it accessible to anyone with an internet connection. Secondly, we made it free. The third thing that we did was we invited a large community of uh, DevOps professionals and thought leaders to the conference. So this year we had 125 speakers. We had many speakers from large enterprises as well as government organizations from the Department of Homeland Security to HHS to GSA, the Department of Defense. All were able to participate with speakers and with uh, their employees uh, to learn about DevOps and exchange information on a global scale uh, and to do so in a very free environment. I think the thing that stood out to me most was um, this year we had about 30,000 people participate in All Day DevOps, making it the largest DevOps conference in the world. But we saw many organizations setting up viewing parties inside their own organizations where they could watch as a team, share information as a team, 
uh, and be able to uh, get more value out of the experience than just showing up and feeling like they were watching a webinar. They were also able to exchange information on our Slack channel with DevOps professionals around the world, which made the experience a lot more useful to them in terms of a learning platform. So it's exciting to see what we built in the last two years into from uh, something that started as uh, uh, nothing and no attendees uh, to something that has 30,000 attendees.